All right, so let's mount this differential in the frame, then we can figure out where the brake discs need to go. So the differential is now mounted in the frame. Now I originally cut these pieces of plate a lot taller because I, wanted, I wasn't exactly sure the exact height that we needed to put this thing in the frame because obviously the lower that we get it, the more downward travel we can have with the suspension, which means just better all for jumping and all that kind of stuff. So now, next thing is we need to figure out the exact placement of the brake discs and get them mounted onto the CV cups on either side. Right now I'm soaking the brake disc in uh, vinegar to try and get rid of all the rust on those things. So tomorrow I'll come back and hopefully all the rust is gone. Then we can f you know, figure out the exact placement and get them welded and bolted on the CV cups. All right, so these brake discs have been sitting in this vinegar for 12 hours. Hopefully it took off most of the rust. Doesn't really look like it did much, but yeah, let me wash these off outside and then I'll take a wire wheel to them and see if it helps get off the rust. Yeah, I think the vinegar helped a lot with getting all the rust off. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's definitely a lot better.
Alright, the brake discs are now installed on this thing. Now, I tried to mount this as low as possible, and yes, the brake discs are sticking out past the bottom of the frame by about half an inch, as well as the sprocket's kind of sticking out past the bottom of the frame. Well, I don't, I, 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 mount, I tried to mount this thing as low as possible to give us a little bit more downward travel of the suspension, and also make it to where we can mount the engine a little bit lower, because the muffler's going to have to go right here, so... I will be putting a skid plate on this thing, so I'll put a skid plate under this as well to protect it so it doesn't get hit by rocks or anything. But yeah, just the lower we can get this, the lower we can get the engine, and the more downward travel we can have of the suspension. So, now, next thing is let's get the CV axles installed and kind of tacked into place, and then we can figure out how much suspension travel we have with this new setup. Yeah, that's a really nice safety hazard. This grind, this on-off switch on this grinder is so worn out, you can't simply just push it down anymore to turn it off. You have to, uh... You have to, you have to put your finger under here and pull it up to get this thing to turn off. It's a really nice safety hazard. Now, the nice thing about having this CV axle a lot longer is now there's only going to be one weld to connect these two together. Now, I kind of feel like I have to say this. This is only temporary. I will be putting a giant chamfer on both of these and then doing a 100% TIG weld to connect these two together, but I only tack this on in place just so we can calculate the amount of suspension travel that we can have. So these are the shocks we're going to be using for the rear suspension. These are rear shocks off of a uh, Raptor 660 and I bought two of them because obviously we have two trailing arms, we need two shocks. Now these are designed to, ha to have one shock for the rear of the suspension so hopefully using two of them isn't going to make it to where, because this is a really thick spring and it's designed to hold up mo almost all the weight in the rear and I'm using two of them so yeah, hopefully it's not going to make it to where the rear suspension is way too stiff. Now, I calculated how much suspension travel we have. We have a total of 11 inches, which is not bad at all. I measured how long the, tra the trailing arms are. This is the hind joint, this is the tire, and this is 11 inches of travel from here to here. This, these shocks have 3 inches of travel. Now, to be able to utilize all of 11 inches of the suspension travel that we have, we have to mount the, the uh, shock three and a half inches from the pivot point, the hind joint on the trailing arms. And hopefully that, because, and that's kind of good because the closer it is to the pivot point, the less weight it's going to take to move the suspension. So hopefully making it to where it's mounted three and a half inches from the pivot point, that makes it to where, uh, yeah, it hopefully makes it to where it doesn't, you know, the suspension isn't too stiff. So yeah, let's, uh, let's get this shocks installed on this thing.
Alright, so I think this is the lowest that I can mount these trailing arms because any lower than that, if I take out the shim, it starts, I can feel the CV axle kind of binding up a little bit on, like right there, kind of binds up, right there, and right there. So, seems like right there is perfect. So I'm at least able to kind of move the suspension, so that's a good sign. Now let's check how much suspension travel we have. So that's actually not that bad. For how for how compact this whole setup is, that's actually not that bad. Let's check to make sure that these do something. Not as much as the front, that's all the way soft, and then all the way. That's all the way stiff. I mean, it's still, you can definitely tell the difference, but it's not as much as the front. So the rear suspension is done again for the second time. We got the differential installed, we got the rear shocks installed. Now I'm hoping it's gonna, once the engine is in place and all the weight of that and jack shafts and everything, hopefully the, the, the whole thing is gonna sit a little bit lower. Cause I kinda, I kinda want this thing a little bit lower to the ground, low center of gravity, so it's not so top heavy or anything, anything. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this whole thing will sit a lot lower once all the weight is installed of uh, everything we gotta add to this thing. now. I've been really trying to figure out where is the gas tank going on this thing. Now there's basically three options. Option A is just building a large gas tank around the behind and around the seat. Or I was looking at pictures on Google of other Baja bugs and I saw this picture of a overlanding Baja bug where he had not only a tree kicker on both sides right here, but he also had roto packs on the side right here and I could I, I, I bought these on Amazon these are a gallon each 
and I bought two of them. Uh, we could have one on either side, and I was kind of thinking about having these be the gas tank, and that would leave room for other stuff behind the gas tank, like storage or something like that. But I'm wondering, like, is two gallons enough? I really want this thing to have a decent amount of range, therefore, you know, we can drive for long distances with this thing with a full tank. Or, what I could do is simply put a small gas tank behind the seat and then have these as backup reserve fuel. Because I kind of really like the look of that. Because I'm, I'm thinking of building some kind of step or tree kicker, you know, right here to not only help protect the fiberglass, but also to help get us, you know, so we have a step on here to be able to get in and out of this thing. And I, just, I don't know, I kind of really like the look of that. So basically, either we can do one very large gas tank and not do these, or we can just have these as the gas tank and no, no gas tank behind the seat, or we could have a small gas tank behind the seat and run these as reserve gas tanks. So, I don't know. Let, let me know what y'all think. Is two gallons enough? Or should we just make, kind of make it easier and just build a really large gas tank behind the seat and just have one gas tank and, like, and that's it. So... Anyway, next video of this project, we get to finally start working on installing the engine on this thing. It's going to be kind of really a challenge to get everything to fit in here because not only does the, the muffler and the expansion chamber have to go back there, but also the jack shaft, the CVT, we have to figure out where that's going. So it's going to kind of be really cramped back there. And it's going to kind of be a challenge to get everything to fit back there and everything. But, uh, anyway, guess that's it for this video. Thank y'all for watching. I'll see ya in the next video.